Good evening. How's everybody doing? Good. Welcome to the west side of San Antonio. Thank you to all the folks at the Guadalupe Center. Thank you to Gabriel and everybody who are hosting us this evening. My name is Joaquin Gosser and I'm the congressman for District 20 here in San Antonio. This is my wife, Anna, my kids, Andrea and Roman. And I know, you know, there's uh, somebody that looks like me in this town that used to be the mayor. And he was very helpful in planning this and in spreading the word. But my brother got caught up in New York today, and so isn't back to join us. My, uh, my sister-in-law, Erica, is here. And my niece, Karina, my nephew, is John. I want to say to all of you, each and every one of you, thank you for being here this evening. Recently, this administration changed its policy with respect to immigrants at the border. It is now standard government policy to separate young mothers from their children who present themselves at the border. They're separating. They're separating young, young children from their mothers and the mothers and fathers sometimes for days, weeks, and even longer don't know where their children are. And today is not about politics. I'm not speaking to you as a Democrat, and I hope you don't hear me as a Republican or a Democrat or an Independent or a Libertarian. This is very much a call to conscience. This is about what our nation fundamentally stands for. And I'll have some more remarks in just a second. But before I go further, I want to start us off with a few prayers to open. The first one is by a wonderful rabbi, Rabbi Mara Nathan. Rabbi. We are a nation of immigrants. Each ethnic group in our country has a story to tell. As a Jew, my family's journey to America from Eastern Europe in the early 1900s was spurred on by religious violence and persecution, poverty and discrimination. The members of my family, of thousands of other Jewish families, were separated for months and even years, sometimes forever. Wretched and dangerous conditions across the Atlantic Ocean were endured. Horrible working and living conditions were tolerated. All of this to ensure safety and a better future for the members of the family who would come after. So whether your family has been here for seven generations or for seven months, your people also came here for a better, safer future. I am sure that your people's story is very much the same. But it is easy to forget where we came from. It is easy to disregard how each of us has at some time been seen as the other. We must not forget, we cannot turn away. We must not violate our American heritage as a nation of immigrants. As a person of faith, I look to the prophetic tradition of the Hebrew Bible for inspiration and guidance on how to live my life. The Bible tells us again and again that we are commanded to welcome the stranger. We are commanded again and again to protect the widow, the orphan, all the vulnerable in our midst. We are commanded to welcome the stranger, for we were strangers in the land of Egypt. The separation of migrant children from their families at the border is abhorrent and cruel. The reported physical mistreatment of minors, including pregnant teens and those who have recently given birth, as well as the separation of children as young as 18 months old from their parents, is horrific. As Americans, as people of faith, as human beings, we cannot justify these actions. There must be a more compassionate way. At this moment, we have come to gather, to be informed, to protest, but also to pray. And so let us pray. Holy One on high, our hearts are broken to see our fellow human beings treated with cruelty. Our hearts are broken when we hear of small children being torn from their mother's arms. When we imagine their fears, when we imagine their tears, 
we shed tears as well. Protector of all, grant these parents and children strength to enjoy the journey of their lives. Let them feel our love and concern. Let them know that though they suffer, their plight is not unknown. Grandeur of compassion, imbue our leaders with compassionate hearts and sound minds. Inspire them to make decisions that protect our borders, yes, but also decisions that protect the safety and dignity of those who cry out to be saved. Of all human beings who want nothing more than safety and security, a future for their families and for themselves. Holy One on high, give us strength or purpose to speak up for what we believe in, to see the good in others, to act justly, and to demand justice for those who cannot speak for themselves. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that wonderful prayer. As you can see, there are folks here from many faiths, many different religions. And I'd like to invite up next a father that I've known for probably 20 years of the Catholic faith, my own faith, and that's mm -hmm. Father Jimmy Drennan. Father Drennan. We stand here as a testament to what our nation looks like from one coast to the next. We are a mosaic of peoples drawn from different cultures, different nations, different languages, different religious traditions. But we are united in every way in our understanding of families. That families should never be separated and should never be victims of the policies of our nation. We gather together united. We are drawn from the Christian tradition, the Jewish tradition, the great traditions of Islam, the Hindu tradition. Zendalists have gathered with us today. We gather together to not simply offer prayer, but outcry. Outcry that will reach the ears of our sisters and brothers who seek justice in our nation. And we will not be silent until we change the policies that are destroying our families. It is in that spirit, gathered together with the strength of these great religious traditions behind me, before me, and around us, that I ask that we bow our heads, asking the blessing from the author of life. Lord our God, we gather this day to begin an outcry that we know in the deepest realms of our heart will reach our brothers and sisters across this state, across this nation, and will inspire listeners around the world. We will continue to unite ourselves, not simply asking for or even demanding but working towards and fighting for justice, justice for all. It is of the deepest tenets of all of our faiths that our families be united. Dios nuestro, creemos que la fundación de la humanidad es la familia unida. No solamente unos en este país, Pero nosotros, todos juntos, alrededor del mundo, siempre sacrificando nuestra vida por la causa de justicia y paz en el mundo. Creemos que en la familia recibimos la abundancia de gracia de tú, nuestro autor de vida. Bendice este encuentro. Y los demás que van a gritar en este mundo contra las reglas destruyendo la familia en la frontera y en nuestro país. Loving God and Father, it is with the deepest of faith that we gather together and we pray and we commit ourselves to work in every moment of our lives to bring an end to these policies, an end to all regulations that bring such harm to families. 
and that we restore our nation as a nation that welcomes people, not divides families, that a country we have been in our past and will be in our future, one of love, of service, one of unity in our diversity. Bless the efforts of this night in everything we do to bring unity to our family, to restore the families that have been broken, and to change the direction of our nation that we may live up to the great hopes of our people. These blessings we ask upon this night and upon all that we do in the days, weeks, and years that lie ahead. In your name we cry out, in your name we pray to you, author of life, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi Nathan and Father Brennan. In a moment, we're going to bring up immigrants who will give testimonials about the effect on their lives of the immigration policies that we're seeing now and over the last few years. Before that, I want to make just a few remarks and really tell you why I was spurred to action as you have been in being here tonight. Not too long ago, I heard about this change in policy, the fact that the Trump administration would start separating kids from their mothers and fathers at the border. And I thought right away that this is not who we are as Americans. This is not what we stand for. This country has been a beacon of freedom, of democracy, and most of all of respect for human rights. And your presence here tonight is a signal back to Washington, D.C., to the President and all those who would make a decision about this policy, that just because somebody crosses a border doesn't make them non-human. We can treat people with respect. We must treat people with respect and as human beings. And we can still enforce our immigration laws, but do it in a way that's consistent with American values, that doesn't betray what this country stands for. And as I thought about this over the weekend, and I was reaching out to people in San Antonio to try to help put this together, and in cities in Dallas and Houston and Austin and the Valley and Corpus, I talked to folks from Northwest Arkansas who have a rally on June 5th, and a friend from Salt Lake City, and a friend in Des Moines, Iowa, in Los Angeles, and in Phoenix. And I kept thinking that if all of us can't come together and stand up now, not because we're Democrats or because we're liberal, or because we're Republican or conservative or Christian or Muslim or anything else, but because we're human beings and we're Americans who uphold the tradition of respect for people. And if we can't stand up now and stop this in America, then we can't stop this anywhere. Yeah! You see in front of us, we asked folks to bring shoes that symbolize the young children who have been taken from their parents, from their mothers and fathers. And there are brutal accounts by these parents who are not told for days or weeks or even longer what's been done with their kids. There's a story of one man who begged to go back to Central America if they would just give him his child. And they wouldn't tell him where they took the child. That's not how you treat people in this country. It's immoral and it's wrong. And that's why we're here tonight. Ah! In just a little bit, I'm going to ask you, we're going to talk about things that we need you to do. We thank you for your presence here tonight, for being part of this. But we also need to take action. Y'all know that there are a lot of things over the last few years that, not just on this issue, but on other issues, that instill a lot of emotion in all of us, a lot of passion. Certainly raises people's blood pressure every now and then. In fact, I feel oftentimes that the nation's blood pressure has been raised quite a bit. But anger is not enough. 
All of that passion and emotion, and yes, anger, must be turned into productive action, into change. So in just a little bit, we're going to ask just a few things of y'all and how you can help. But right now, I'd like to welcome up for a testimonial, Jessica Azua. She's a DACA recipient and also an organizer with the Texas Organizing Project, a group that helped a lot on this rally. Jessica. It's an honor to be here with you this evening. Um, es un honor estar con ustedes el día de hoy. My name is Jessica Azua, and I'm the State Immigration Coordinator with Texas Organizing Project. Um, I'm a proud San Antonio resident, and I'm standing here today because I have DACA. But not so long ago, I wasn't documented to. And I know what it's like to live in the shadows, afraid of having your status known, of being deported and separated from your family. Mi nombre es Jessica, eh, yo soy una residente de San Antonio, muy orgullosa, y estoy aquí porque yo ahorita tengo el DACA, pero no hace mucho tiempo yo estaba indocumentada, y yo sé qué es lo que es sentir estar oh, ocultándose, tener miedo de que sepa nuestro estatus, de ser deportada y de estar separada de tus familias. That's why this issue is very personal to me. Es por eso que esto es muy personal para mí. Did you see these pants here? Ven esos pantalones, estos capris, PJs. Um, that's what I was wearing when I crossed the border at the age of 14. Estos los pantalones, los pantalones que yo estuve, los que yo usé cuando yo crucé la frontera en la edad de 14 años. Do you see how short they are? Ven que tan cortos están. And I kept them with me for, for, for 13 years now because they remind me every day of all the struggles and sacrifices of that journey to get here for a better life. Y yo me los quedé por 13 años porque a mí me recuerdan cada día todos los sacrificios, todo lo que pasamos en ese viaje que lo hicimos simplemente por tener una mejor vida. The thought that something like that that, that something could have happened to me just like those children are being separated from their family is just horrible. And nada más pensar de que eso es algo que hubiera podido pasarme a mí justo como le pasó a esos niños es horrible. Es horrible. Um, these pants remind me that I cannot waste my time here. Estos pantalones a mí me recuerdan cada día que yo no puedo perder mi tiempo aquí. That I need to speak up. That's my problem. Por eso los traje. Because I wanted to share my story with you. Porque yo quería compartir mi historia con todos ustedes. All these families want, just like mine, our better life, better opportunity, and education. Todo lo que quieren estas familias, justo como la mía, son mejores oportunidades, mejor vida o una educación. The government should not be tearing families apart. 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 Thank you. 
your life. What our government is being right now, what our government is being right now is inhumane to our its own residents, to our its own families that want to provide for others and drive our economy. Lo que el gobierno está haciendo ahorita es inhumano hacia sus propios residentes. What we know now more than ever, what we need now more than ever is accountability and transparency for our other agencies. From MICE to Border Patrol to DHS. Yeah! yeah. yeah. We need swift action and for people to be held responsible. Yeah! yeah. 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 So please, take out your phone right now. Les voy a dar un número. I'm going to give you a phone number for you to save your phone. Les voy a dar un número al teléfono para que lo guarden en su número de teléfono. We are going to be demanding to end the voluntary zero tolerance policies that are separating children from their families every day. Vamos a estar pidiendo que terminen las políticas de cero tolerancia que están, que están separando muchas de nuestras familias cada día. We're going to be calling Attorney General Jeff Sessions. Yeah. Vamos a estar llamándole al, al Attorney General Jeff Sessions. ¿Listos? 202-353-1555. 202-353-1555. Call them all the time, right now, tomorrow, every day. And tell them. Uh, the number 202-353-1555. Call them every day. Llamen cada día. Y dígale si quiere que termine zero tolerance policy. My fellow Texans, we will not give in into Trump's case. Not now, not ever. ¿Se puede? Yanira López Lucas, yo estuve encerrada en una detención dos meses con mis tres hijos. Bueno, voy a decirlo en español y ella en inglés para que puedan entender todos. Ah, como les decía, estuve dos meses encerrada en una detención con mis tres hijos. I was in a detention center for three months with my uh, children. La idea que tiene el gobierno en este país es que uno viene a pasear a este lugar. The idea is that the government thinks that we come here to have a vacation. En realidad, no es así. But it's not like that. Uno viene huyendo de su país por todo lo que está sucediendo y lo único que uno quiere es proteger a su familia. All we want to do is protect our family. We are refugees trying to escape everything that is going on in our countries. Créanme que siento mucho dolor por estos padres que están siendo separados con sus niños. Believe me, I feel so much pain for all the families that are going through this being separated from their children. Cuando yo crucé México, de mi país a, a México, mis hijos se perdieron cinco horas. 
When I crossed the border, I lost my children for five hours. Créanme que yo gritaba de dolor a todo el, a, a, a las personas de, de México, de, de, de la policía, para que me ayudaran a encontrarlos. I was screaming in so much pain, trying to ask the, the police, the law enforcement in Mexico, to help me find them. Créanme que es un dolor muy grande. Es como que le quitaran un brazo o un pie a uno. It's a very intense pain. It's like somebody taking off an arm or a leg from you. Es tan difícil, de verdad, separarse uno de sus hijos. It is extremely difficult to have to separate yourself from your own children. Y pensar en la situación en la que estamos viviendo ahorita, tantos padres, tantos niños separados, es injusto. And to think of the time that we're in right now where so many parents are being separated from the children, it is an injustice. Cada uno de los que están aquí son padres. Imagínense ustedes si por un momento le quitaran a sus niños. ¿Cómo se sintieran? Some of you here are parents. And imagine, if you were separated from your children, how would you feel? Venimos huyendo de tanta violencia en nuestro país, pidiendo asilo en este país, pidiendo ayuda, y a veces con nuestros hijos enfermos. We come here uh, escaping all the violence that we're experiencing in our countries. And sometimes we do it with our children that are very sick. Es tan difícil el trato que uno recibe en este país cuando uno viene a pedir ayuda porque no somos delincuentes. Solo venimos a pedir ayuda. It is very difficult to live every day with the type of treatment that we're given in this country and all we want is just a chance to live in peace. Créanme que cruzar la frontera, estar encerrados en una perrera, una perrera fría, fría, fría con nuestros hijos y después ser metidos en una detención por tanto tiempo. The experience is like this. You get put in a jail cell and then you put it and it's freezing in there and then from there you get put in a detention cell. Siento mucha tristeza por un padre que está pasando ahorita siendo separado de su hijo y la preocupación del niño que el niño tiene un quiste en el cerebro no está recibiendo atención médica. ¿Cómo creen que está ese padre y ese niño? I feel very, very horrible for a father that is being separated from his child and the child has a cyst in his brain. Do you, he's not receiving any medical attention. Creo que el gobierno debería de analizar lo que está haciendo porque no está bien. Ellos también tienen hijos y siendo separados ellos de sus hijos pueden sentir lo que nosotros sentimos también. Government has to think about what they're doing. They also have children, and they also have to put themselves in their shoes and think about what they're doing. Y todos los que estamos aquí vamos a hacer esas voces para que la familia siempre sea unida y que esos padres jamás sean separados de sus hijos. And all of us here, we're going to be the voices for those families so that those families can be reunited and do that work to help keep them together. <laughs> Because the unity, that is what helps us move forward. Thank you, Yanina. Next, I want to invite up Chuna, an undocumented Honduran who lost TPS under, the president, under president Trump's administration. Hello family, hola familia. Um, I am a sixth grade English teacher. I am being labeled as an illegal, as an alien, as an animal, everything except human. And this is not something that is new. This is not something that is new with this administration. It is not something that is new to, uh, you know, when these immigration laws began. I also identify as a Lenca Maya, and if you know your history, you know that the Lencas and the Mayas have ancestry that is older than these borders and these governments that currently exist on these lands. And as a person who identifies as a native and indigenous, I am not here to tell anybody to go home or that they are a foreigner or that they don't belong here because we are all indigenous to this earth. And we are all citizens 
So I am angry, of course. And being here, I do feel like my pain is being profited from. I feel like being here and putting my face in front of your cameras is putting me and my family at risk. And I am being profited from, right, from people who do mean well, but also people who mean very, very hateful things for me and my community. We are also being profited from, from the private uh, prison system, right? Mm -hmm. Because the more of us they got in their prisons, the more money they have in their pockets. That's right! So coming here and speaking in front of you took a lot of guts. Me and this mother right here, we talked about it. We're like, we feel like we are the entertainment. But you know what? It is important to also uplift what is going on in our homes and how scared we are to even go out in the street. And how we feel like even some of you dressed in civilian clothes could come up to me and try to apprehend me and take me to a detention center because that's what's going on to our community. We are getting picked up off the streets by people dressed in civilian clothes. People who consider themselves activists across the nation are getting picked up after they come up and put their face in front of a camera and say, hey, we deserve to be listened to because we're human too. That's right! We're getting picked up. So we need to really think about what's going on. And if you say you want to protect us, yeah. because I will do the same for you, then really protect me when I'm home at 4 in the morning when they're bursting down my door and taking my own boy and my brother away. Yes, policies are important. But I need to know that if I'm putting my face right here and telling you and bleeding all my pain to you, that you're also going to make sure that I'm good when I'm sleeping with my mother that works 12 hours a day to put food on the table and to put rent money down for a house that she's been paying off for for 20 years and she's about to lose because we lost TPS. And all those hours and times that she wasn't there because she was working to make a living for us, all that time, we're like, hmm, you should have just been home, Mom. Because now we're about to lose everything we've worked for. And you know what? You can tell me, you know, you're American too. Yes, I'm American. I'm indigenous and I'm native. And I don't need you to tell me that because this border is here, now I'm accepted. I've been accepted because I'm a citizen of the earth, of the world. And these borders are new on my land, on my home. And they are put there to keep people out and to keep you in and to keep us separated. And so I appreciate the people who said the prayer at the beginning. But Indians, right, we the ones that are being murdered at the border and the natives of all the countries around the world because this migration crisis is not unique to this border. It is worldwide. We need to think about why are these migration patterns intensifying around the world? There is something greater going on. It is not just, oh, they don't belong here, they're illegal or breaking the law. There is something greater going on. And there is so much hate brewing. So we need to stop and think about that, right? Because it's not just white against brown, black against brown. No, we are human and we need to stop and think, why are those patterns happening? So, I come here not begging, but I'm here as a confident indigenous Lenka Maya woman letting you know that my community, we don't need saviors. We need people who are going to stick with us. Yes, yes. 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 Because we've been through thousands of years living on the ground, through hundreds of years of colonization, through enslavement through genocide, and as a human race, we've always done it to each other, so I'm not here to point fingers. We've done it to each other, I know. So we need to think about all of that in the context of immigration. It is not just, all oh, these children are lost. What are we teaching our next generations? What are we teaching as a human race to all these children that are missing? And I hope that they're with their families. You know, I really do. I came here when I was five, I was brought here when I was five, my children, and there's, you know, other people saying that these parents are human traffickers. My parents are my heroes because they risked their lives, they almost died in a hundred different ways trying to cross that border to get here because they are taking away the natural resources of my land because if we go and Honduras 
and we stand in front of a crowd with a mic like this, we get murdered. Look up Berta Cáceres. What do we, what happens to us in our own lands? We get murdered. So this is privilege to be in front of you too, here. Because even though I could get deported once I'm over there, if I decide I want to have a voice and voice my concerns, I could get murdered. Because that's the situation that we're in. So we are not just here begging. Right? We, we are home. Don't, don't confuse it. We are not immigrants, aliens, illegals, or animals. We are human. Thank you. That was beautiful music. Let's give her another round of applause. All right, there are many people who helped put this rally together tonight, and it's one of the first in the country, and we can be proud of that because San Antonians have always stood for what's right, and we're leading the nation. Thank you to many, many of the elected officials who helped get the word out. I saw County Commissioner Tommy Calvert here. Tommy, thank you. Thank you for all your work. Former State Representative Pete Gallego, Jose Menendez, and many others. And I'd like to invite a few of our elected officials who represent this area uh, where we are now, come up and say a few words. And first, I'd like to introduce my great friend, who's a hardworking state representative. I've known him, I grew up here on the west side of town, 
My brother and I were baptized at the church just across the street. But in 1987, I met Diego Bernal at Tapoya Middle School. <laughs> and he does such an incredible job for the people that he represents. Diego. Good evening. You know, I had something great to say tonight. I really did. Um, but as Joaquin spoke, I started to lose my composure. And as we heard the prayers, I started to lose my composure. And as we heard the testimonials, I started to lose my composure. And after the songs, I have lost my composure. So I'll just say a little bit. I'm not today. I'm not here today as a state representative. I'm here today as a neighborhood guy and a dad. And today, that's going to have to be enough. Because, again, this is not about our party lines at all. At all. Look, if we're being honest, we are about to enter one of the darkest moments in our nation's history unless we get this right. If we don't act and correct this now, if we don't do this now, this moment in history will go down in books for years and years, and it will be a stain that we will not be able to erase unless we do this now. Now, oh, by the way, just in case anyone didn't get it, take a quick minute. Take a picture. You know, It's not just liberal or conservative or Republican or Democrat. I challenge anyone to go through any of the great books, the Bible, the Torah, the Quran, and find me the place that tells us that what's happening is okay. It is not. There is no strand of faith that makes what's going on okay. In fact, it is the direct opposite. So, so if we are serious, if we are serious about it not being Republican or Democrat, if we are serious about it not being progressive or conservative, then I will say right now there is a seat at the table to end this for every Cornyn, for every Cruz, for every Hagee, for every Olstein. We will work with you to get this done. Let's see how serious you are about it. We are waiting for you. And for you. For you. Raise your hand if you see people that you already know. And that is the problem. As, as we go and give you action items tonight, the one other thing that you can do is bring people into this. This is a universal humanitarian issue. You can bring people into this to help us fix it, but without that help, without that, those numbers, we won't get it done. But right now, I see hope, I see promise, I see courage, and this can be done. We get this done, but it's going to take all of us. We cannot get tired, we cannot get fatigued. We have to have a lot of stamina, and we have to be deliberate. Tweet your tweets, post on your Facebooks, but remember that it's going to take all of us together to get it done, and it starts right now. Thank you guys so much for being here. The members of the city council and the mayor here, I'll bring them out. The councilwoman Gonzalez, who represents this area. Good evening. Where many are gathered, so shall we be. Thank you all for coming out tonight to really relinquish the politics of the moment, but to focus on what's important, which is that we are a city of compassion. We are a nation of compassion. We are a nation that will always be about immigrants and about welcoming others. And there is no cause greater than the children of the world here in San Antonio. So thank you for demonstrating that to us. Thank you for demonstra demonstrating that to each other and continue to carry that message of compassion each and every day that you go through this. We are with you, we are here to serve you, but we will not rest until things are made right.
afternoon, everyone. I'm Shirley Gonzalez. I'm the City Councilwoman for District 5. Uh, and I want to share a story. A couple of years ago, it was around Thanksgiving. I was coming back from Houston, visiting some family, and I got a call. They said, there are a hundred refugees at the Mennonite Church. We really need help. Uh, can you come? And I got there as fast as I could. And the image that I saw could be the most impactful one that I've ever experienced in my life. I walked into the church, and there on the side in one of the sanctuaries, there were about a hundred women and children. They had been moved from Dili from a detention center there, and they were here in San Antonio. And I was so furious. I said, who did this? Who could do this to these children and to these mothers? And when we learned what had happened, and they had been transported from parts of the different parts of the state, and they had been in, in what they call the the, uh, uh, the freezer, uh, and they had had the children there, and you can see in the eyes how many of the children were sick, and that they really needed attention. But one of the things that I'm so very proud of, and as I look out into the crowd today, I see many of the faces uh, that I saw there that day. People bringing things. There was an organization like I had never witnessed before. Laises was there. The Mennonite Church and John Garland was there with his congregation. People helping. People were driving up from miles around with truckloads of food and clothes and toys to give to all the children and to take care of the families. And some of the very first people on the scene are standing with me today. Councilman Trevino was there. Councilman Saldana was there. And Ron, at the time, Councilman was there. And, and they, everybody pitched in and was helping. And of course, the very next day, uh, Congressman Castro and everybody organized an event so we could continue to discuss this issue. And I'm so sad to see that the issue continues to come. It's been a couple of years since that happened, and I'm so sad that we haven't resolved this issue. But one thing I can very much say with very strongly is that this community stays together. We are in a passionate city. We're a city of people who will drop everything in the middle of the night. It was the middle of the night. Two o'clock in the morning and people were still coming and bringing things and saying, how can I help? How can I be of service? And people standing behind me were not afraid to roll up their sleeves and get to work. And I'm so proud of that effort and what we do here in San Antonio to help our families. But we do need to stay together. We cannot do it alone. It takes all of you all vote talking and telling your neighbors and, it, and telling what you saw. Many of y'all were here that day and you saw what I saw. So please get the stories out. We cannot let this continue. And we have the power within us, each and every one of us, to make that change and to make the difference. So thank you for being here today. Thank you so much for caring. Thank you so much for your unending support. It, unfortunately, so sad, but it continues. And we can do, we can make that change. We can do it ourselves within our hearts, within this community to make the difference. Thank you all for organizing us. Oh, I see all these people here today. I'm so proud. Uh, I'm so proud of us as a city uh, for doing everything we can to keep families together. Thank you all so much. I want to say thank you to the mayor and the council members who are doing a wonderful job representing the people of San Antonio and the character of the city. Thank you, mayor. Thank you, council members. Thank you very much. Next, I'd like to bring up a group that's been fighting not only in Texas but across the nation on this issue and many others for quite a long time. That's the ACLU Texas. Today we gather here to give a voice to those who can come here today and speak. To all those mothers and children that are in prison. All those mothers, those parents and kids that have been separated at the border. There is no law that requires parents and children to be separated. The Trump administration bears full responsibility for this inhumane policy. The ACLU is fighting for the immediate reunion of hundreds of children and parents through a class action lawsuit. Hundreds of kids. Yay. Hundreds of kids as young as 18 months are in danger of suffering lifelong trauma. 
we can't let that, we can't let the Trump administration shift the blame or use families as bargaining chips for a border wall or other crackdown. Medical experts know the trauma of family separation. We must hold ICE and CBP accountable for the cruel and unnecessary suffering inflicted in these families. Yeah. The Department of Homeland Security and the Department of Justice should immediately end this inhumane and cruel practice. Now, much as they'd like to, President Trump and Attorney General Sessions can't personally enforce the prosecution orders they're working out. In Texas, it's up to both the U.S. attorneys. Ryan Patrick, as you may know, he's the son of our Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, and the Western District, John Bash. And they are the ones that are carrying out these orders. Now, they're both in Texas. One of them is here in San Antonio. John Bash is here, so I invite you to also call him up, just like we're calling Jeff Sessions. He's here. And we should call his office and ask him to end this inhumane policy. 210-384-7100. And one last call to action. We also, we have uh, Congressman Gosser here. And we want to make sure that everybody also contacts their member of the Congress and ask them to support the Protect Family Values at the Border Act. We must pass humane policies. This is our call to action as well. We are responsible for that. We should call them. This is our moment for, for our communities to fight for those people that are arriving at our borders and are being separated. Esta, esta ley tan inhumana que el presidente Trump, el Departamento de Justicia y el Departamento de Seguridad Nacional han pasado, tiene que terminar. No es una ley, eh, el separar a los padres y a los niños no es una ley. Es una política inhumana y cruel. La administración de Trump es completamente responsable de, estas, de esta tragedia que está sucediendo en la frontera de todos esos padres que hoy en día están en una cárcel sin sus hijos, sin saber en dónde están ni poder comunicarse con ellos. El ACLU está peleando para que haya una reunificación inmediata de esas familias. Mil, mil, cientos de niños, tan pequeños como hasta 18 meses, de dos años, están en peligro de sufrir trauma de por vida por estar separados de sus padres. No podemos dejar que la administración de Trump utilice estas familias como monedas de cambio por, una, por, una, por un muro o por más protección en la frontera. El Departamento de Seguridad Interna y el Departamento de Justicia tienen que terminar con esta práctica. Y los responsables también son los fiscales que están aquí en el estado de Texas, John Bash, que está aquí en San Antonio. Le pueden hablar también a su oficina, igual que a Jeff Sessions. Su teléfono es el 210-384-7100. O pueden mandarlo en Twitter también, por eh, las redes sociales, que son muy poderosas hoy. También podemos eh, pedirles, que, exigirles, mejor dicho, que terminen esta práctica inhumana. Eh, el, la administración de Trump está haciendo mucho daño a nuestra comunidad migrante. Hoy más que nunca tenemos que pelear para defenderlos para protegerlos y así como estamos hoy juntos con ellos, que sepan que a pesar de que están detenidos, hay quienes estamos luchando por ellos y vamos a continuar peleando día a día para que haya justicia y las familias sean reunificadas. Gracias. But there's one more group that I'd like to invite up. And these are folks that day in and day out represent immigrants who are dealing with the immigration policies of today. 
and that's Raices. And Raices is the model for the nation about a group of people who have been hardworking and compassionate and dedicated to the people that they serve and have always been there to lend a hand to folks who need it, vulnerable folks who need it. So, the folks from Raices, please come on up. With races, and I think a lot of what I wanted to share has already been shared. Uh, I'm really thankful to everyone that's here. Uh, Yadira talked about the experience of the horror that families go through in detention, and when she talked about separation of our own children, that's what we're seeing day in and out with our clients all around Texas, some of who have been separated for a year or more from their children while they go through the complex process of seeking protection here in the United States. Um, and Raises, we were based here in San Antonio starting 30 years ago working with refugees. And what we've seen all of throughout Texas at all of our offices is families going through this horrific experience. Um, when Representative Bernal was talking a little bit about looking anywhere in faith traditions for something that justifies separating families, I have a similar challenge for the Trump administration. I would like them to look anywhere in our laws for anything that justifies or requires separating families. Yeah! I think if you do that, they will not fight. And when you hear the administration talking from the rhetoric, a lot of times with dehumanizing, criminalizing rhetoric, there's a sense that maybe a family would have to be separated for some reason, prosecuted criminally, but nothing could be farther from the truth. Um, I think uh, something that I'd like to share uh, that really points to what this looks like is a family we worked with recently uh, in Austin and Corpus Christi, two different families, both of them suffered separation. In one case, a six-year-old was separated from her mother, and the six-year-old woke up crying because her mother was gone and had been taken away and was being detained in an immigration camp 200 miles away. And so if you can imagine that six-year-old going through the process of seeking protection in our complex legal system, her mom trying to find her, not knowing, and eventually reuniting only after months. Another family living now in Austin that we work with, in that case, a mom and her daughter, who was eight years old, presented themselves at the border and asked for asylum as refugees. They asked for protection from the death threats they were receiving. Well, a year later, they were still separated. The mom was sent to an ICE detention camp surrounded by barbed wire with guard towers in the valley in the middle of the desert. And the daughter was put into this federal system of shelters that's not equipped to protect children in the way that's needed. So I think one thing that our clients have told us, and really it should be the folks that we represent speaking here, and I'm glad to say that in the days that are coming, we have more and more folks who are stepping up who want to share that story and call out what the government is doing. So we're going to be hearing more and more from them here in San Antonio and around Texas. But I think that uh, one thing that they're asking is, uh, we're hearing a lot about where are the lost children, right? Where are these remember children? For years, parents have been asking us, where are my lost children? Where are the children that were lost to be at the border? They weren't lost after release into communities where they're living with family, with sponsors going through their process. They were lost at the border, at the moment of seeking protection as refugees. And that's the loss that we have to prevent. That's what we have to call on the administration to not do. And so it's, it's all important that three things happen here. We have to stop criminalizing families and prosecuting parents as criminals who are doing what any responsible parent would do. Here in Grant County, we would call any parent. And I brought this big sheet for a reason. Um, any one of those parents, we need to not criminalize them and prosecute them at the border, separate from their, them from their children and make their children unaccompanied to where that they are lost to their parents. And then they have to go through a process without legal representation. We need to call on our government to stop those practices. We need to call on our government to support legal services for children who are unaccompanied that are living in our Texas communities at the age of 8, 9, 10, 12 years old and having to seek protection under a complex asylum system that most lawyers can't even understand, where they have no right to a lawyer and they've been separated from their parents. We need to call on our government not to take away those funds as they've done and announced this month, but to put those funds back and we need to support and we ask for your help to support us as we represent children that have been released into Texas communities. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. The reason I have to keep away from me is, in addition to asking for y'all's help to support our LEAF project, our Legal Education and Access Fund, where we're going to represent every child in Texas as our goal that's unaccompanied and going through that process in Texas. We ask you to support that 
but we also ask you guys to find somebody with one of these pink signing sheets over here and my coworkers are back there in that tent. And we ask you guys to sign up to, to get into action, to really come together with all of us in San Antonio with our great organizations like TOP um, and SA Stands that are uniting around these folks. We ask you guys to sign up and be trained uh, with us. So this coming Saturday, we're going to have a training uh, for how to come down to the bus station right here, the Greyhound bus station, where many folks, when they finally are released after that nightmare of months and years of detention, they're dropped off by ice at the bus station. And we have a project where we can train y'all to come out and support those families, offer them support, welcome them, help them get on their journey. We also ask you guys to sign up on one of these pick sheets for our accompaniment program. So not just Raices, but so many other organizations here, we're working together to train folks to accompany those families going through that process. So that means any of us can go together with a mom that's presenting herself at an ICE office for a terrifying check-in or she might be detained in court. Or accompanying a child or a family to immigration court right down here in Dolorosa Street. So we invite everybody to sign up and come out with us to those trainings. And we ask everyone to also visit our Facebook. We ask for your support for our bond fund and our beef fund. The bond fund is all important because here in San Antonio, we count on every one of you guys. When we are now committed to representing parents, which we are, who have been separated from their children, here in the Pearsall Detention Center and out near Dallas, we want to keep representing those folks for free, and we will, and we want to expand that. But we can't do it without you, because we have so many parents who are facing that agony of separation, and they have been fixed with an immigration bond by a judge that's $1,500 minimum, with no upper limit. So there's parents with $10,000, $20,000 bonds. And we ask you guys to visit our Facebook, Raices Texas, and donate to our bond fund, because every dollar counts to get those parents out, reunite with their children so that they can fight their case and be together again in the community where they belong. Thank you. All right, thank you, Raices, for all the great work that y'all do, tireless work, too. We're almost done. We're going to finish off in a minute with an ending prayer by Pastor John Fagans of La Trinidad United Methodist Church, which is over 100 years old here just across the bridge into downtown. But before I do that, I want to say, uh, acknowledge a few more folks that are here, elected officials who helped us get the word out. Patty Radel from SISD School Board. <laughs> Ana Sandoval, who's a District 7 council woman that I went to school with many years ago at Jefferson High School. I, I saw Joel Adarete, who's on the Alamo College's board, uh, used to be a former councilman also. Thank you to all of you. To some people that, you know, it was basically four days that we put this together in. And when I announced it on Twitter and I said, we're going to do this rally, Reporters asked me, well, how many people are going to show up? And I said, listen, I'll stand there with two people or 200 people. But let it be said that when we asked San Antonio to show up, that hundreds of you showed up and stood up. Because we have our own zero tolerance policy. Zero tolerance of bigotry. Zero tolerance of betrayal of American values. Zero tolerance of treating people like they're not human. So thank you. And now, to close us out, let me invite Pastor Fagans to join us. One of our other faith leaders who's here today is Sakwat Hussein. And I've asked if she could share her thoughts and words as well. Thank you so much, Pastor. Hello, everybody. This is the month of Ramadan. I don't know if you're familiar with it or not. Muslims fast from sun, uh, sunrise to sunset. And I'm fasting as well. This is the month for us to celebrate the lives, the bounties, the blessings that God has given us as human beings to his children. And this is not the time for us to see what other parents are going through with their children. Everybody's children are my children as well. I cannot, I cannot understand the pain those parents must be going through and our leaders cannot feel it. What is Session doing today? Does he know that the country is rising up against all these uh, stupid laws that they are making? Yeah. <laughs> Quran tells us, 
that God has made us into different nations and tribes so that we learn from each other, we protect each other, we love each other, we teach each other. He has not asked us to draw the borders and divide ourselves like this into different colors and nations and what have you. Anybody who cannot feel the pain of other parents, I don't think they're human beings. They do not, they are not civil, they should not be allowed to live among us. These federal agencies have placed the, uh, these children, almost 1,500 of them, with sponsors that the parents do not even know, that the children themselves do not know, they're strangers. Can you imagine if it is your child or my child? Leave them somewhere like this. We check out even if we leave them with the babysitters. Would Trump leave his children like this, his grandchildren? Let's ask him. It is un unspeakably cruel. I want to know where are those kids. We should demand that. America has to come out on the streets to demand this from Trump and his administration. Our silence from here, if we go home, we forget what we have done today. That is not enough, folks. We have to rise up bigger than this. All San Antonio people have to come out on the streets. San Antonio is a compassionate city. Along with that, of course, I'll give a small prayer that we pray for the peace for the parents and the children who have, who have disappeared like this. And we ask God to please grant you peace to the parents and children in these difficult times. We know God is out there. We know he's testing us. He's also going to ask us, what did you do? What did you do when these parents and these folks and these children are going through something like this? Somebody before me said that this is not just happening here. It is happening around the world. And if we do not start putting a stop to it here, I don't know where it will stop then. We pray for the support of the parents. We want the parents to know that we all are here out on the streets in the nation to support them, to do whatever it takes to bring those kids back to them. But have we ever realized this experience of the kids that they are going through is going to stay with them for the rest of their lives? Do they need counseling for the rest of their lives? Does anybody care about it? We pray for the guidance for the parents that, oh God, give them the wisdom and patience and guide them. At a time like this, when you do not know who to turn to, where to go, who to ask, they were leaving their country to get a better life, to give a better life to their children here in the United States of America and we did the worst to them. We pray for the love of the parents and the children, that we want the parents to know we all are here for them. I hope they are watching somewhere. I hope they are seeing around the nation people are, people are out on the streets and they are standing up with them. We should not rest until those kids are brought back to the parents. Thank you for being here. Paul. A couple of years ago, we, through Raices and the Pentagon, also received a large group of detainees that were released in a mass release on a cold and rainy night in San Antonio. We prepared some caldo, caldo de pollo, and calabacita, and they said it was the first home-cooked meal that they had had in months, that they had been fed bologna sandwiches. We saw a child whose arm was swollen up red from having 12 different vaccinations given on the day of release. Adult doses, um, horrible treatment. But while Raices was doing intake with the parents, we were, my wife and I were in the room uh, with some other workers who are also here tonight uh, working with the kids who were playing in our playroom at the church. And, and uh, Vincent, my son, who's here on the stage with me, he was playing with those kids. Now, how many of y'all have heard of Ancestry.com? Ancestry.com, right. I used to be on Ancestry.com, and uh, 
I mentioned it because part of the problem with this immigration concern is nativism and people just getting really into their own nativism. And I, I went and researched my background and found out that I'm a ninth generation descendant of Virginia colony. DNA 100% Northern European after those two generations. I don't know my goodness. I didn't know. My son here is going to be 10th generation, and uh, but he's also a first generation Bolivian American. Uh, my wife's from uh, first generation from Bolivia. Cochabamba, Bolivia. And while little Vincent was playing with the kids that were in detention in our playroom, one of the moms turned to Pastor Raquel, not knowing that she was Pastor Raquel, and said, how did your son learn English so quickly in the detention center? <laughs> and, and I heard that and it cut me to the heart. I thought, if, if somebody that's been inside that place can't visually distinguish between a 10th generation descendant of Virginia colony and their son who came across with them just weeks earlier, how is a police officer supposed to do that under Senate Bill 4? Or anybody else? How? They can't. Because there isn't a difference. As we've heard here today, we're children of God. We're children of this earth. We're all indigenous to this planet. And that's what unites us. Would you join me in prayer? I'm going to say a Christian prayer that is an interfaith prayer as well. There's a part of this prayer where I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and I invite you, if you desire to say so, to join in responding by saying, hear our prayer. When you hear, Lord, in our mercy, you respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Creator God of love and justice, Christians believe your solidarity with the human race was revealed in the incarnation of your word as a child. A child born as an indigenous Palestinian. A child that was an immigrant, a refugee. A child whose birth was anticipated by prophets, heralded by angels, celebrated by shepherds, worshipped by migrant sages, magi. Yet from his birth until his death, he was pursued and persecuted by authoritarian rulers and hypocrites. Through this child named Jesus, we are taught that you show favor upon the meek, the merciful, the forgiving, the generous, the hospitable, and the kind. And so as you sent your spirit on Jesus, we pray that you would send your spirit upon us to proclaim good news to the poor to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. We pray for you to soften our hearts in the hearts of those who harbor ill will towards immigrants. Awaken our consciousness, kindle in us a passion for justice and love, that our prayers this night would be worthy of your attention, even as they conform to the holiness of your love. And so for many faiths, we unite our hearts and prayer for children. We pray for children whose lives are threatened by scarcity, disaster, pollution, violence, corruption, displacement, defamation, and bullying. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for children whose parents have encountered such desperation that they sent them away to climb onto freight trains and cross deserts and borders unaccompanied. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for children who, even now under this new policy, are being ripped away from the safety and security and embrace of their loving parents, essentially kidnapped by a government in order to coerce the parents and the family to leave. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the children who shiver under mylar blankets in the crowded, cold cells of our for-profit detention centers. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the children whose arms swell up after being injected with adult doses of multiple vaccines. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for children whose years of innocence and discovery are being stolen inside anti-immigration concentration camps. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for children dumped in the middle of the night in cold, wet streets of our cities, their mothers humiliated into wearing the ankle shackle GPS monitor. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for dreamers 
brought here as children, raised and educated as loyal, patriotic, successful, devout Americans, yet with no pathway to citizenship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the lost children, those who have slipped through the cracks, children who became undocumented by no fault of their own, but by the negligence of our government, and the lost who will never return, whose shoes, clothes, backpacks, toys, and yes, even bones lay bleached in our desert, unidentified, uncounted, unseen by anyone but you, Lord, in your mercy. And we pray for the children of privilege, children of privilege, exposed in our culture day after day to the propaganda of racism, nativism, xenophobia, resentment, bigotry, and hate to protect their hearts and minds from these lies. Lord, in your mercy, save them, Lord, deliver them, and deliver their families. For we read in your holy word that your wrath burns against those who would harm even one child. And your plumb line of justice will test our response to the least of these. For as we do to them, so also we do and have done unto you. Calm our fears. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts to love, hands to serve. Transform us and our nation from the inside out that we might return to the way of love and peace. By your Spirit, give us courage to rise up to resist, to act, until we find the justice that we hunger and thirst to find. And let the genuineness of our many faiths be proven in our sacrifice, even as the greatness of our diverse and beautiful nation is proven through our exceptional hospitality. And all the people say, Amen. Amen. Finally, thank you to Mal, the Mexican American Legislative Caucus, to Jack Uresti, to Juan Torres, to Matthew Jones, to uh, Jorge Urbi, and everybody that worked so hard in putting this together. And thank you all, and it's time now to act. Thank you for being here.